This is an example of a model that includes one dummy regressor and one continuous regressor and an interaction term between the two. So again, we won't worry about issues about causality or um, anything for now. Uh, we're thinking about how to just interpret the different parameters in the model. So imagine we have some function where we can rearrange things to think about it in this form where we have what looks like an intercept plus x times a slope, but because we have uh, this dummy variable in there, it's allowed to shift the intercept up or down there, and it's also allowed to change the slope with respect to x. So we can sort of imagine one line where d equals 0 and the intercept is beta naught and the slope is beta 1. And then a separate line when d equals 1, the intercept becomes beta naught plus beta 2 and the slope becomes beta 1 plus beta 3. So to make it concrete, we have this example where y is somebody's commute time, so how many minutes it takes them to get from their home to work. D is a dummy variable that's equal to 1 if the person walks and 0 if they drive. We'll assume those are the only two options just for simplicity. And x is the distance from the home to the workplace in kilometers. So given that, we can start to think about if we have our distance on the horizontal axis and time on the vertical axis, first we can think about um, the conditional means. So I'll put blue dots for the mean commute time given d equals 0, so driving, and then x equals whatever value down here. Just to clarify, this, this is our x on the x-axis. And then we'll also think separately about the average commute time for people who walk, also given how far they're going. So if we think about these conditional means first, if the distance is literally zero, then this is zero over here. If the distance is zero, then it doesn't matter whether you walk or you drive. You'll get zero either way. Now we think about uh, someone who's driving. If they need to go one kilometer, they'll be able to do that faster than someone walking. So in other words, the slope will be lower, but it will still be positive in both cases, that it'll take a positive amount of time to go one kilometer. So maybe we would get something uh, like this for the driver, and something slower for the walker. And then if we think about going a second kilometer or a third kilometer. Uh, if you think about you know, someone who just lives in the suburbs, maybe uh, the first kilometer near their home, there's probably a lot of stop signs and low speed limits. 
um, once they get past a kilometer or two kilometers, they get to more major uh, roads with fewer stop signs and higher speed limits. So in other words, the marginal time to drive the next kilometer we would expect to be less than uh, that first kilometer. So for the driver, it would sort of start to flatten out a little bit like that. Maybe eventually they get to the freeway, the freeway, so they're going very fast um, like that. For the walker, we might expect even the opposite of that. Maybe I drew this realistically, but too high for my pedagogical purpose. So maybe the first kilometer, uh, they're doing, they're going pretty fast. Um, and then they start to get tired. So the second kilometer is actually slower for the walker. So it starts to sort of bend upward. Um, the third one is, you know, they get really tired, it's way up here, so it's sort of bending up like that, whereas for the uh, driver, it's a concave shape instead. Now, if we think about a linear projection, right, the linear projection is constrained to be a linear function, so it won't capture that curve, it'll just sort of approximate it. So if even though the intercept of the CMF is zero because of the curvature here, the uh, linear projection or the best linear approximation may actually end up having a negative intercept down here. So again, this is for the walker with d equals 1. So this intercept is the full beta naught plus beta 2 because d equals 1 plus beta 2. Uh, whereas for the car, having that opposite curvature, that's sort of concave, the best linear approximation or the linear projection, maybe something like that, where actually the intercept is positive. And because for the driver d equals zero, we don't get that beta two part of the intercept, we only get beta naught. Beta naught. So we can see in this case, beta 2 must be negative because beta naught plus beta 2 is actually less than beta naught. Uh, we can also think about the slopes here. So when d equals 0 for the driver, the slope is beta 1. And then for the walker, when d equals 1, the slope becomes beta 1 plus beta 3. So that's the slope of this green line. So you can see the green slope for the walkers is even more positive and steep. So in this case, beta 3 is positive. Just as over here, beta 2 was negative. So this is uh, just trying to help us understand how having this interaction term gives us the flexibility uh, to have not only a different intercept, but also a different slope, which allows for things like people who walk are going slower than people who drive. Uh, so often this is a very useful and realistic uh, feature to have in the model, and hopefully this example helps uh, walk through a concrete example of how to interpret the different
parameters and how they affect the different slopes and intercepts.